The fare for the new London Paris air service is 15 guineas. Of course, the journey cannot be guaranteed every day owing to the bad climate. Engine failure cannot be entirely eliminated and delays and forced landings may occur. The representatives of the high contracting parties are arriving at Versailles for the tremendous task of laying the foundations of a lasting peace. The consciousness of their great mission weighs gravely on their hearts. Its sentiment has been well expressed by President Wilson. We are the servants of mankind. And if we do not heed the mandates of mankind, we shall make ourselves the most conspicuous and deserved failures in the history of the world. The peacemakers in their Hall of Mirrors saw but reflections. Reflections of a Europe that though they knew it not, had gone forever. With good intention, they traced new frontiers, built a patchwork Europe on the pattern of the old. But once mighty empires lay ground in the dust, crowns had scattered like autumn leaves, and from the broken earth, fertilized with blood, new creeds were germinating, creeds that were to spread their vines across all frontiers to the furthest corners of the globe. In Russia, an ancient dynasty of imperial czars had vanished. Lenin fired the people with a new belief. Communism had started on its forward march. In Italy, a young nation, victorious but dissatisfied, still dreamt adolescent dreams of glory. Men in black marched on Rome and a newspaper editor became a dictator. Fascism had begun. In defeated Germany, an allied army of occupation and a crippling debt. But no creed, no leader. He had yet to come. And in victorious Britain, economic events were proving that in modern war, victor and vanquished suffer alike. Plenty of people had the answers, of course. The trouble was they were all different. Higher wages, lower wages. Longer hours, shorter hours. The only thing you could take as certain was strikes. All the trains stopped. People waited outside the stations for hours. As for the buses, you couldn't get on them for love or money. And I tried both. Yes, they had a nice line in queues even in those days. Of course, they invited you to go by aeroplane. But aeroplanes weren't much good to me. By the look of them, they weren't much good to anybody. And anyway, I never wanted to go further than Brixton. And then, to crown it all, the buses stopped. And we had to ride in lorries. The wind blew from Golders Green right up the old Kent Road. Then up at Liverpool, the dockers came out. The shops were all boarded up, and the government called in the army. Things began to look very nasty. Even without strikes, there were enough people doing nothing. Every other day, trade union leaders like George Lansbury and Ernie Bevin came to sort things out with the government. Things were very touchy all round. Yes, there were shaky times all right. Governments came and went. Lloyd George, who'd run the coalition during the war, gave way to the Conservatives and Bona Law became Prime Minister. A few months later, he died and a new chap came on the scene, Stanley Baldwin. But his government didn't stay in long. Before a year was out, Ramsay MacDonald came in with the first Labour government this country had ever had. They didn't have much of a run either. Still, life went on as it's 
got a habit of doing. Enormous crowds flocked to Wembley on Saturday to witness the 1923 Cup final, the first in the new stadium. When all spectator space was filled, the crowds rushed the barriers and many thousands swarmed onto the playing pitch. Mounted police, one on a white horse, forced the crowd slowly back over the touchlines. Then, a quarter of an hour late, Bolton Wanderers set about taking the cup from West Ham. It is with the greatest pleasure that the King and Queen announce the betrothal of their beloved son, the Duke of York, to the Lady Elizabeth Bowes Leon, daughter of the Earl and Countess of Strathmore to which union the king has gladly given his consent. The nation is greatly distressed by the deaths on Mount Everest of the members of this year's expedition, Mr. Mallory and Mr. Irving. How many more must die trying to conquer the unconquerable? In the opinion of experts, the day when every home in this country will have its wireless telephone receiving set is now in sight. The broadcasting of news, speeches, music, everything, will soon be an accomplished fact. In his opening speech, His Majesty King George V said that this great exhibition of 1924 revealed to us the whole empire in little, containing within its 220 acres a vivid model of the architecture, art and industry of all the races which come under the British flag. I suppose that was true, really. Of course, I couldn't say myself we only went once saved up and came down on excursion. It was a wonderful do, all right. Palaces of industry and engineering, things on show and things being made, oh, everything, from the flying Scotsman to the Queen's Dolls House. 